Hello, everyone. Today, we're very happy to be here with you to show you the latest updates about the ESRI 3D web mapping JavaScript technology. You already know that 3D web scenes are supported across desktop browsers. However, as many of you requested, in the next release of RGS Online, Web 3D will also work on modern phones and tablets. This is very exciting, because just by clicking on a URL without installing any app, everyone will be able to interact with the 3D scene on their phone and with their own hands. So let me start by opening the Chrome browser. And go to, I'm going to go to RGS Online, where I have a web scene of the city of Raleigh, North Carolina. When I open it, it loads the scene viewer, the same desktop application you can already use today in desktop browsers. However, it detects this is a phone, so it will optimize the UI for the phone screen. This scene contains hundreds of thousands of buildings and trees, and I can navigate around and zoom in to get more details. And we notice how the data streams in very fast, very responsive. The scene layer contains the building geometry, but it also contains attributes. So let's take a look at this redevelopment area. Here I have two building proposals. And I can tap, for example, on the skyscraper to get a pop-up with more information about the project. But building attributes are not only used for pop-ups. They can also be used for data-driven visualizations to show us how. Here's Russ. Thanks, Javier. So here I have, my, on my iPad, we're looking at those hundreds of thousands of buildings in Raleigh, North Carolina. And they're coming in on a 3D object scene layer. We're looking at the scene viewer on my iPad, and we can see we have a UI that's optimized for a tablet touch experience. So uh, like Javier mentioned, you can style your buildings in your scene layers using the attributes within it. So I want to look at the walk times to the metro stations from all these residential buildings. Going into my building scene layer, I just need to pick the walk time attribute. And using the counts and mounts style, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a new color ramp. And I'm going to adjust the position of the sliders. And you can see, as I make these changes, the scene is updating. So let's just take a closer look. And we can see all the buildings that ha are in yellow have over a 12-minute walk time, and the ones in a shade of blue have less than that. Now I want to talk about something else that's coming in the next release. Here we're looking at Mud Creek, which is on the coast of California. And last year, there was a massive landslide, and the USGS collected point cloud data uh, during the landslide changes. So we're not just looking at imagery in the scene. We're looking at point cloud scene layers with tens of mil millions of uh, points. And we can use the slides to look at all these different point cloud scene layers, stream in all those points. And we can see the progression that Caltrans made putting a new road network in. That's pretty neat doing this on an iPad, but I also have something else I want to show you. We're also adding a new measure area tool. So here I want to measure the area of the impacted land from the landslide. So by turning on the measure area tool, I can begin tapping in the scene. And once I finish my measurement, I can freely navigate the scene. And I can update any of the vertices just by tapping and moving them. And you see my area update. Now, to show you more what's coming, here's Javier. Thanks, Russ. That was awesome. Uh, beyond web scenes like these, uh, you can also create 3D web mobile story maps or apps with the Web App Builder. And all of this technology is available to you developers in the Esri JavaScript API. As an example how to do this, we build an app for the Swiss National Park hiking trails. In this app, you can see the trails with labels that are actually elevated in 3D for better visibility in the mountain area. You can also use filters, like by walk time or by difficulty. And you can click on any of the trails to get more information, like this client-side generated elevation profile, or photos that are coming from a special query against the Flickr API. But this is a progressive web app which means if you open it on the phone, you can install it as an app and open it from the home screen, like I have here on my Android phone. 
When I open it, it loads and it looks like an app. It doesn't have the browser URL, did you notice? But it's still the same JavaScript web application that I showed you on my desktop. When I open it, I still see the trails with the labels in 3D. And I can select any of the trails to get information, the elevation profile, and the images. And don't forget, this is a 3D web scene running on my phone. And I can zoom out to the entire globe. <laughs> Thanks. So let's switch gears now and talk about something else, but really, really awesome. I'd like to introduce a new capability that we're going to release with the next release of the JavaScript API, edge rendering. With edge rendering, you will be able to style your scene layers with or without textures. Edge rendering will improve depth perception and will help you to see all the details of the 3D geometry. Edge rendering will allow you to create amazing visualizations like these. And very important, edges are generated on the client. So you can turn edges on and off and change the style on the fly in the browser. Let me show you. Here I have a web scene of the city of Zurich in Switzerland. To enable edges, what I need to do is apply a new symbol to the layer with the edges property in it. The two options are type. In this case, I'm going to pick solid, and a color. When I run it, wow, the building details now really pop, don't they? This is really cool. But let me talk to you about another edge style. I'll start by adding a new layer, a redevelopment project in the city center. Because this is a design proposal and it's not yet approved, I would like to give it an unfinished look. To do so, I'm going to use edges. Again, I set a new symbol with edges property and the type sketchy this time. I also an extension length. When I run it, now my buildings look hand-drawn. Isn't this cool? <laughs> yeah, the buildings look hand-drawn, but there are still GIS features. So I can click and get a pop-up with the project information. Combining edges of type solid and sketchy in the same scene is a great way to tell your story all together. That's pretty amazing there, Javier. It lo really looks great. That's all we have to show today, and we're really excited to see what great 3D web apps you'll be creating with the Esri JavaScript API. Thank you. Thank you.